Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the 2012 attack on Benghazi was a tragedy that took the lives of brave American public servants representing and serving our country. And Congress has an obligation here, both to the families of the victims in the country, to try to prevent this from ever happening again. But that's not at all what we're doing here today. The Senate has produced two bipartisan reports on the issue. The State Department's Accountability Review Board has produced a constructive, unbiased report. A vast body of evidence already collected, none of it demonstrates any sort of cover-up or conspiracy. The majority here has, has had 13 congressional hearings over four committees, 50 briefings, produced five reports and 25,000 pages of documentation, wasted countless millions of dollars, and gotten absolutely nowhere. One more committee weighted in favor of the majority is not going to do any better. We have bottomed out on Benghazi, but nonetheless, the majority has repeatedly demonstrated that rather than engaging in a serious objective examination of circumstances, they want to use the tragedy as an excuse to generate partisan talking points, and it has descended into the crass and the unbelievable. Several press reports this week, including one from Politico, indicate that the National Republican Congressional Committee sent out fundraising email entitled, quote, you can become a Benghazi watchdog right now, end quote, and that leads to the donation page that you have to pay to be a Benghazi watchdog. And even after that fundraising effort was exposed, Republicans are continuing to use this effort to raise money over this tragedy. This morning's Politico says, quote, Republicans stick with Benghazi cash grab. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to uh, put these two articles uh, from Politico, May 8th and May 9th, into the record. The first one, NRCC, which stands for the National Republican Campaign Committee, fundraising off Benghazi. The second one this morning, Republicans stick with Benghazi cash grab. I'd like to put those into the record. Out of objection. Additionally, Reports today from a prominent journalist suggest that Mr. Boehner himself will say that he will not try to stop the fundraising. The majority is demonstrating, without a shadow of a doubt, that like the many, many votes we've taken trying to kill health care, that this is a political move. That is the most crass and awful thing to do to the families of these four people who died. We keep over and over rubbing salt into that awful wound by bringing this up over and over. And how do you think they feel now, knowing what this game is about in the House of Representatives? I'm appalled the majority would lose the, use these deaths for political gain and political money. They, uh, when the families of the victims and Americans want to do is to ensure it never happens again, but we're doing nothing in the world to ensure that. Not only is the majority disregarding the bipartisan findings, but their own process is so wrought with error and partisanship and deception that leaders in their own party are calling foul. The Oversight Committee has produced several witnesses of dubious quality, but the most recent one was a Brigadier General to testify uh, about uh, the minority, and the minority only gave, or was only given his name and had no way, with no address, no anything else, to even verify his uh, credentials. We are indebted to Congressman Buck McKeon, Armed Services Committee Chairman, who discredited this witness by saying, and I quote, McKeon called Brigadier General Robert Lovell an unavailable, unreliable witness and criticized Lo uh, Lovell's assertion that the State Department was not quick to deploy troops to respond to the 2012 terrorist attack in Libya. Lovell testified Thursday before ISA, Ari, California, oversight panel. Brigadier General Lovell did not serve in a capacity that gave him reliable insight into operational op options available to commanders during the attack, nor did he offer specific courses of action not taken, McKeon said. McKeon added, quote, the Armed Services Committee has interviewed more than a dozen witnesses in the operational chain of command that night, yielding thousands of pages of transcripts, emails, and other documents. We have no evidence 
that State Department officials delayed the decision to deploy what few resources DOD had available to respond, end quote. How tragic is that? How tacky is that? How beneath the dignity of the House of Representatives is that? I have an amendment to this resolution based on a simple premise that if this thing is going to be put together and funded, that it really does some kind of work bipartisanly, which would be really strange in this House, to try to, but the idea of really of having another committee to try to get different results from all of the other committees and all the other hearings with the results they have really is a foolish waste of time. Our amendment makes membership on the committee equally divided between Republicans and Democrats. We know already that's not going to happen. Guarantees the minority sign off on subpoenas and depositions. No such luck. Guarantees equal distribution of money, staffing, other resources of the committee. Requires the committee to establish written rules. That would be a good one. Specifically including the rules concerning how documents and other information may be obtained, used, or released. Guarantees equal access to evidence and materials of the committee. And perhaps can identify witnesses who are going to be coming before the committee. Provides for transparency of the committee's expenditures and budgeting ensures that a quorum for taking testimony or receiving evidence includes at least one minority member, and finally ensures that the majority has a say in decisions about extended questioning and staff questioning of witnesses. Mr. Speaker, it's shameful what is happening here today. Future people, not just persons right now, but in, I believe that future historians looking at the setup of this committee will be appalled as all the rest of us are on our side. That to make use politically and financially of the tragedy of the loss of four great Americans is beneath contempt. And I reserve the balance of my time.